Hello everyone and welcome to episode 38 of the Real World Draft series here on the channel using TW2020 as it is another episode of CWA Stampede as uh, we have some uh, a title match on our hands as Ray Phoenix again defending the GWC International Openweight title it says it's going to be against Sheamus this time around as uh, we have a debut of the big tag team, the Golden Lovers, as they're going to take on Hiroshi Tanashi and Kido Miyahara was, you know, a bit of a dream tag match. It's probably not going to be as well as uh, it would be if this was, like, set in a promotion in Japan or whatnot, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but I think it's still going to be a fun little match. Omega's going to pull his weight. Oh, the Tanashi's going to make it a good little match as well, but... Uh, really, like, a, it's weird that the Bushi and Kinto Biohara are gonna r really bring this match down, where if it's anywhere else, it'd be, like, no, there'd be really no weak link to, to be picked out. Uh, j that's just, you know, a fun little matchup, but uh, we have no backstage in incidents or anything, so let's just run the show as uh, our two, first of two pre-show matchups is Tony Storm and Chris Statlander, which Statlander outperforms her, which that is sad, but also great for Chris. I mean, she has been... Part of our roster forever. I wanted to use her a lot more, but her stats haven't been there. But now it's getting better. I mean, Tony Storm, as you'll see, is going to be a part of our the Golden Grudge show or you know pay per view coming up. So if she can do it, then fucking Chris Statlander can, especially with Sasha Banks as a champion. Really, anybody can can take her on because she'll you know bring the rating up as far as just her her performance in general. But the strong zero gets the win at six twenty nine for Tony Storm, as a page at least doing some good job. At ringside this match so this is gonna happen on the next uh tv taping but i you know it's just like oh we'll make that a next segment for next week so we'll just have it be a pre-show match kind of see where it's at she gets a 53 could have been a lot worse but kenta basically this will be dubbed as kenta's return match after being out injured for all that time as he'll take on pete dunn which he wins in 1247 with the kenta combo into the bazagu knee uh as that's uh 51 for kenta 45 for pete dunn yeah poor pete dunn as uh I felt like he was going to be a big part of that British Commonwealth division. Pac ran through it, and now Tommy Inn just kind of been avoiding a lot of people as we're really building up, or you know, trying to build up uh, the heap between him and Brody. But it's uh, it's been it's been a long one. Uh, there hasn't really been anything in between between just waiting for the belt. As uh, now we get to the actual Stampede TV intro. There we go. I got a 59 to 61 for the debut of the Golden Lovers as uh, Bret Hart introduces them, brings them out to the CWA audience, as uh, you know, saying that this is you know he's bringing in CWA, one of the, if not the the most talented tag teams in the wrestling world today, adding to our you know stacked tag team division, you know, you know Canada, Canada's own Kenny Omega with Kota Ibushi, as uh, yeah, at least you know Kenny did a great job with his egomania gimmick, which is really great. Awesome, yeah, it's, that was a good little opening intro, and then the opener, which, wow, it's still a 61, is, wow, I thought Tom Ashley would bring it down, but it was actually, uh, Kenta Mirahara was, uh, the, the second best guy in the match, at least Abushi's getting there at 53, he, it's, it's coming along, it's not there quite yet, but it, it's still coming along nicely as, uh, the Golden Lovers get the win at 940 when Omega pinned Kenta Mirahara with a one-winged angel, yeah, I mean, a 61, obviously, this is anywhere else, this is like a, you know, an 80 or even maybe a 90, depending on, uh, you know, how Tanashi's doing. But a 48 for Tanashi, that's tough. As we, uh, move on to, uh, the next, uh, segment, which is Paige laying out the challenge of Sasha Banks at Golden Grudge. Uh, Sasha Banks will meet the Storm, her Storm, Paige's Storm in Tony Storm, as, uh, the Storm has, has come to the CWA, and it's come to wreak havoc on that women's division. That's gonna be the championship title matchup now for... Sasha Banks and Tony Storm, which obviously we kind of we'll see where Sasha's gonna have to carry her ass through a title matchup. But I got a forty nine. Was hoping for a little bit better page. You know, I made it. I like having everyone having to be able to improvise dialogue. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. We see it there. As this man, yeah, I figured this would do really well. It's Phoenix and Sheamus as uh, it's over in ten oh eight with the meteoric uh, as Phoenix keeps that fucking. Warning streak of going. Defense number five now of his GWC International Openweight title as he uh, beats Sheamus. There's a point where Barrett tries to interfere, but it ends up just he gets fucked up by Phoenix. That, it wasn't in the notes. I don't know why that happens sometimes where you put botched interference and it just doesn't show it. I don't know. Maybe it's just, <laughs> maybe it's just me. Uh, but uh, Phoenix with a 68. Uh, that's, you know, he's one of the best guys on the roster. We need to do him in Pac for sure. Like, that needs to happen. 
as uh, 56 for the next segment as uh, Blood Generation, led by you know, Roderick Strong this time around because, uh, you know, we don't need Pac in this. As Roderick Strong has his eyes set on Ray Phoenix and GWS, or GWC, Jesus Christ, GWC International Openweight uh, title as uh, they do a beatdown on him post-match, laying him out, all three of their finishers, just laying waste to poor Ray Phoenix. As uh, I mean, the champion's got a big bullseye on his back, and he might have got uh, a ginormous one now with he's got Roderick Strong and basically Blood Generation against him. As uh, That's going to be a hell of a match. That Well, basically, you know, we won't build up next week, so then we'll just say it here. It's going to be Roderick Strong and Ray Phoenix for the uh, GWC International Openweight title. That's going to be a hell of a mid-card matchup. But this main event, as uh, we have Brody King as uh, with Sami Zayn and Kevin Cena taking on the Dark Order. As uh, Tommy Yen with Evil Uno and Stu Grayson as uh, Brody pins Stu at the All-Seeing Eye in 640. A lot of people off their game, but at least, it, you know, Brody with a 48, that's tough. Felt like uh, he's kind of maybe regressed a little bit. So Tommy Yen with a 53. Who's improved, I feel like. I think these ratings are kind of all over the place from what I re remember uh, them doing. But at least Kevin looked good out there. And, you know, God bless him. Was one of our, you know, him and Sammy were really a part of the, the first couple of probably five or ten TVs being a major point and a major vocal point on that. And now it's kind of like they're uh, used as the uh, uh, the uh, baby face tag team of the major uh, stories, whether it's uh, Brody King or, oh my God, I... I just realized what the fuck happened. I'm such an idiot. It's supposed to be Brody Lee. And I fucking... Oh my god. Oh, that's embarrassing. So Brody Lee was supposed to be a part of this. No wonder everything was so fucked up. Jesus. As yeah, Brody Lee was supposed to win. Dear God. As let's just move on. Uh, to Renee Young interviewing the Young Bucks. Uh, which that gets interrupted by the Golden Lovers. As basically Renee was just, you know... Talk, asking them, you know, your, your friends, you know, Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi, you know, and elsewhere in the world, you've been the Golden Elite. Is there going to be some type of alliance here? And the Young Bucks just basically say, you know, yeah, so we're just focused on our tag team titles. If, you know, we cross that bridge where they want a part of us, well, I mean, if they want a, a piece at these tag team titles, I will gladly give them the shot. And and, and comes <laughs> Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega who do just that and go, listen, you know, We've had our, our battles in the past, and I, I think it's time that we do it again. And it's going to be for those that's the CWA Canadian Tag Team titles. And uh, before the Bucks can even answer, though, as uh, Ms. Morrison, they put a stop to that immediately. They say, listen, let, let, hold, the, hold the fuck up. <laughs> you know, this is just, Ms. is just irate. It's like, this isn't give your f friends, you know, tag team title shots. This, what do you think this is going on? They've had one match. You can't just give people title shots willy-nilly after they've just been here for one day. We've busted our ass. We deserve a shot. And, uh, you know, nobody in this t in that locker room deserves a shot more than we do. So if they, wanna, if they want a title shot, they're going to have to prove it. Next week, Stampede, us, you know, Ms. Morrison, taking on Kenny Omega and Kodobushi's Golden Lovers, and we'll send your ass back and back to Japan. So we have our, a, a big time matchup set for the next Stampede. <laughs> this, I cannot believe I fucked that up. Her main event is supposed to be Brody Lee. And, oh my god. That's, uh, this has been just a cursed, cursed, cursed save. As uh, they increased their pop by 6, lost their pop by 11. So I was right. As uh, that will do it for the show. And we have basically a... Uh, a uh, we set up two uh, matches already for our next uh, Stampede taping, the go-home show, as we're going to have the Golden Lovers taking on Miz and Morrison, which, you know, the winners being a number one contendership matchup, as uh, Kenta's return match, which is going to be on TV against Pete Dunne, as I will also have the contract signing, as it's going to be official in the steel cage at Golden Grudge, Brian Dance and the American Dragon taking on Pack, the leader of Blood Generation, in a cage, as that's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys next week. As hopefully, <laughs> hopefully at least, if all goes well, we'll have our Golden Grudge go-home show, the last CWA Stampede taping before then. Take care, everyone.